Hello Bibliophiles, my name is Jill and if you can hear like the noise of outside it's because my window is open. Um, the reason for this is twofold. First, my cat loves to sit in the window and I, who am I to deny him when he's been cooped up inside all winter um, with the windows closed. <laughs> so I've opened them for him. The other part of that is that this sounds so lame but I just like hearing the noises of, of, the, of the outside, of the birds singing and sometimes there was this person, I don't know if this is my neighbor or something, but somebody um, not too long ago had a loudspeaker and was just like talking to someone else like not like a I was like oh is this like a an ice cream van or something and no no it was just someone just yelling <laughs> through a loudspeaker just like where are the kids you know like get don't forget your suitcase that kind of thing so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that was this video is a little bit outside of my normal comfort zone I'm not great with vulnerability because I am an Enneagram 8 um but also I did feel like I wanted to film this because like I have uh, so I have I have anxiety you'll, you'll see from the title of this video that I have anxiety it is something that um, I have had under control for a couple of years but um, in, s since this year 2022 it has come back with a vengeance and has been crippling and I think um, I want to talk with this a little bit because I think if you're somebody who like just as <laughs> as a blanket statement it's okay to be anxious like being anxious is a normal human feeling and I think that a long for a long time I was like I'm just anxious because I'm human and it's normal to be anxious and but there's a there's a moment in and for those of you who have anxiety well you'll know where that crosses the line from like normal feelings about anxiety about things that are anxiety inducing to the point where it literally stops your life um, from being able to like move forward at all and I had a really particularly bad week this week and I um, wanted to talk about it in this video because one of the things that like is very important for my mental health is reading. One of the reasons I wanted to film this is because um, one of the things that happens to me when my anxiety becomes like really really bad is that I can't read and um, that's because of like I can't focus or because I'm too like I'm far too tired because I don't sleep or um, it's just it just becomes challenging to read the kind of things I normally read. For example, um, I had started the book Red Famine by Anne Applebaum, which is a book that in in a non anxiety uh, uh, flare up state, I'd be able to read quite quickly, but I have not been able to pick it up because I just my brain is not able to process what is on the page um, because it is heavy and it is um, it is history and its names and it's like it just a, it's a, just a denser read um and I have I <laughs> the fact that I can't read that it kind of like <laughs> increases my anxiety so which I know is silly but again if you have anxiety or if you know people who have anxiety you know that one of the frustrating things about it and one of the really like scary things about it is that at least for me anyway I it, it's like sometimes I feel like I can see myself from outside myself and I'm like what you're doing or how you're acting or the things you're not able to do I can like it is ridiculous it is crazy it is like it is it is un incomprehensible why you cannot do that thing or why you cannot uh why you have to do it that way or whatever um and so I feel like I know it I'm fully aware of <laughs> like um all of the things I'm doing to block my own ability to do things but yet I am not able to stop it I am not able to change it I am not able to do the thing it is horrible and it is crippling and debilitating and it uh, affects every part of my life and I hate it however reading is very much part of like my mental health prescription <laughs> so this bad anxiety week I had um, and how I had to readjust my reading this week got me to thinking about the kinds of books I am able to read when I am anxious and I thought maybe that was an interesting video and I thought maybe I would share it with you because I know for sure I'm not the only person who has <laughs> anxiety and I also think that um, I don't know I just like let's talk about the ways that we find um, comfort and like coping you know in these difficult uh, these difficult moments. So I went through my shelves and I found five books that are kind of representative of the type of books that I am able to read when I am not well um, and also books that like um, I find very comforting and very very like soothing to read and that um, the process of reading them actually kind of 
hopefully <laughs> has in the past, hopefully will continue to kind of guide me out of these difficult moments. So, and they may be different for you. And I would love to hear if you have, if you're somebody who has similar coping mechanisms for similar problems, I'd love to hear what yours are. So um, here, are the, here they are. The first one is, of course, I think anyone who's watched my last video where I was extremely anxious um, would know that this is one of them. It's the Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. I, am, I, I need to, I feel like I need to caveat this every time I mention this book. I am not a John, John Green stan. I'm not a groupie. Um, I really didn't like those last couple of books. I actually, I didn't even read Turtles All the Way Down. Um, I don't watch his videos. Like I'm not somebody who's just like going to support John Green always. And I say that because um, this book is excellent and I really want to emphasize how good this book is because I think one of the, aside from the fact that it's incredibly hopeful, like this book is just like dripping in hope and um, every single essay that some parts of it start off, like a lot of them actually start off with like, with a, with a premise of like, of anxiety or of mental illness or worry or fear or whatever. And then throughout the essay, because also this is a collection of essays, <laughs> if I didn't say that, um, throughout each essay, there is hope woven in among all of those, um, those difficult feelings. Um, and every single essay made me feel better. Like I just felt so good reading this. And I read this at a time I was particularly Oh, I was, it was the worst time, maybe, uh, in, in all, in the past pandemic years, it was the worst time of them, which is saying something. And I, there was nothing else I don't think I could have read that would have been the right thing to read at the time. Um, and I will continue to go back to this because it, in addition to like just the content of it and how like, like a balm for the soul that it was. I'm also not sure if I said this, but they're short essays, so they're very easy to read when it's difficult to focus because you only have a couple of pages you have to get through. And also, the audiobook of this is excellent, and I have found that, uh, especially the past couple of months, I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks, which is not my normal way of consuming stories. Um, but because when my anxiety is quite bad, and I can't, like, like, the act of sitting down and having to read a book for an extended period of time is impossible um, sometimes, um, but if I if I'm out for a walk or if I'm cleaning or whatever it is I'm doing that because I had to be moving, I can listen to a story and I find it much easier to like take in that way. So anyway, this one is just amazing, and um, this will be like my anxiety book for who knows how long. But I will definitely turn to this multiple times over and over again um, because it is something that has given me such grounding and hope and also kind of distraction in the challenging days. The next genre I would say that I find very easy um, and comforting <laughs> to turn to um, during extreme anxiety periods is like a crime, more like a mystery novel. Um, this is Nikki French's Sunday Silence, which is the seventh of eight in a series about Frida Klein. So Nikki French is a husband and wife writing team. And uh, I'm, I just, I, <laughs> so I read it out of order. I haven't read the first six. Um, this one I just picked up because it was like for free in my laundry room and I had heard Jen Campbell talk about Nikki French at length. I will leave her video like linked down below where she talks about every single one of Nikki French's books. Um, and you can listen to this series because again this is seventh of eight out of order because I did <laughs> and I still really really enjoyed it. The reason I turn to crime novels and find them quite comforting <laughs> um, during uh, anxiety moments is because one they very re rarely feel real like y it is a fantasy world you know there's going to be a solution you know it will wrap up neatly it will be a very satisfying story and there are so many elements in like a crime novel that are so unbelievable <laughs> like I mean you believe them in the universe but in real life it doesn't it just feels like a fantasy world. I don't want to read books like in these in these moments of like with um, ambiguous endings. I want I want there to be a solution. I want an Agatha Christie type of ending where all the pieces line up and everything gets wrapped up by a bow at the end. Like I find that incredibly comforting. And of course, because they're so plot driven, which is not like the majority of my reading most of the time. Um, it just generally is quite propulsive, so it just keeps you moving, which holds the attention, which is you know. Um, what you need, what I need <laughs> when I'm feeling quite anxious. The next type of book I was thinking about is a book that s has my favorite type of setting. So um, my comfort watch, my, my comfort show is called The Midwife, <laughs> which 
I laugh because I once spent like $40 buying Four Seasons on YouTube um, because they were like taken off Netflix and there's only some seasons on CBC Gem and I need I just like needed to watch them like I was like this there's nothing else that will do at this moment in time um, and I love that show I mean I love lots of things about that show but the setting is a big part of it I love that setting of London of kind of like pre-war and then post-war um, just something about that particular period of time of transition that really really appeals to me and this book um, High Wages by Dorothy Whipple this is set I believe in like the 1930s in London and the premise is like a girl like it's not a very complicated story it's a young girl who like is not she's probably like in her 20s and she's like not focused on getting married even though she's being pursued her she has a dream of like working in a shop and then like owning a shop and it's very much about her working in like a clothing store you know working very hard making connections and then being able to open her own store that's the premise it's an amazing book it is the way it's written is like so easy to read the setting is just like makes you feel like you were in London in the 1930s and being able to picture that like the cobblestone streets and the tiny shops and like the clothing they were wearing like that is such a comfort setting for me um which is so funny because it's such a difficult period in history but anyway as it's a comfort visually for me to, to imagine these things um that this is like and because it's just such a pleasant type of story um but this type of book is like absolutely something that like feels uh like a, again like soothing and easy and comforting to read one thing i find quite comforting um when i'm feeling quite anxious is thinking about stillness like imagining a different reality <laughs> where i live in where things are very um slow and quiet and predictable and i think a book like a town called solace books that are set in this type of small town um, you know, it's about a small family. There are only a couple of characters. The plot is very small. It all feels very contained and quiet and slow. And God, I just, I mean, I loved this book anyway, but that type of book feels very, very comforting. Um, it feels very like, it feels like it's manageable. Cause like, as you all know, I love a big, long, sprawling family saga, but they feel, um, Kind of just like overwhelming you know when I'm not in the headspace to be able to consume them whereas this is like it's a small manageable um like it's just like one frame of a movie type of story and um those I find incredibly comforting and safe to read I actually just two weeks ago read Mary Lawson's other book Road Ends and uh, like again the same type of like very very good at because she's very good at constructing a small world um with very distinct characters but like there is a plot but not a lot of plot it's very much about like living in this slow predictable reality and I find that incredibly comforting and very like soothing like it's it's almost like um it's like it's like a bath like, I'm also just gonna take a quick moment here to just tell you how much I love Mary Lawson I've only read two of her books I think she only has four maybe five um but I didn't know she existed until last summer and I do believe that she will be one of my favorite authors of all time because her writing is exceptional. It just jives with me so much and I cannot believe that she is not more well known, well talked about because she is incredible. So take that moment to just give a shout out to my girl Mary. The last type of book I wanted to talk about um, is probably not like uh, one that like on the surface feels like a book you should read if you're quite anxious but it, I think for me it makes sense. This is Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel and uh, I i mean I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to say what this is about largely because one everyone knows but two I, I don't want to spoil anything if you're worried about spoilers because it does feel like this book is spoilery um, but for me why this works is that Emily St. John Mandel with her books um, uh, oh my gosh, Station Eleven and Glass Hotel has built this particular world and then this world is revisited in particular ways in this book and I found this I, I mean I sped read this book in a when I couldn't read anything else for the past like five days I could not read anything but I sped read this one this really first of all her writing is just like incredible so it's very easy to read but something about the fact that there are recurring themes characters um there's threads that tie this to other other books made it feel like I was revisiting 
the same place I've already been. Like there, there's a level of comfort there. There's a level of familiarity there. She's able to, without like making this an incredibly plot heavy book, she's able to um, make me, the reader, want to, uh, desperately want to know more about um, where these intersections are going to come. I think because this is, I mean, this is a time travel book, which I did not expect. And normally the idea of a time travel book is actually quite chaotic, but this does not, this is such a calm and gentle version of that. If you're familiar with Emily St. John Mendel's work, and if you're not, I'm telling you now, <laughs> she is able to connect things in a way that is so satisfying at the end. And um, I just tr deeply trusted that she was going to make the ending for these characters really rewarding. It's interesting because this book is is quite frenetic in some parts, but I felt like overall, like this idea of like tranquility, there is a sense of tranquil actually in this book throughout the whole thing. There's uh, the tone that she sets at the beginning makes like I did not feel uneasy at any point really. She has a certain magical touch to her writing and to her stories. What an amazing book. Quite frankly, I don't know how this video turned out because it took me forever to film and I think it's a hot mess. But if you're watching it, it means I figured out how to edit it and um, I didn't hate it. So <laughs> if you are also struggling with crippling anxiety, um, just know that uh, I'm really sorry and that uh, I empathize a lot and um, I hope that you can get the help that you need. Um, and I am in the process of trying to get the help that I need. So, you know, uh, good luck to us all. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys soon. Bye.